Mtazamaji ni siku ya Jumanne ya tarehe 16 mwezi wa Machi mwaka 2021 popote ulipo na tumai ala asili yako inapoendea vyema kabisa. Mimi naitwa Ali Manzu nikukaribisha kwenye taarifa zetu ambazo tutakwenda hadi inapoelekea saa moja jioni hii. Nikuaribu na taarifa kuu tunazoendelea kuzifuatilia kando na taarifa ambazo tumezipokea kutoka kwa wanahabari wenzangu maeneo mbalimbali. Karibu kwa taarifa kamili za mbiu ya KTN. Mimi ni Ali Manzo. Ndazamaji mawakili wa gavana wa zamani wa kaunti ya Nairobi Mike Mbuvi Sonko wamejiondoa kwenye kesi ya ufisadi inayohusiana na shilingi milioni kumi. Mawakili hao wanadai japo wamewasilisha maombi kadhaa kwa mahakama kutaka kuahirishwa kwa vikao hivyo bado hawajasikizwa. Baadhi ya hoja zao ni kuwa watalingamana ama walitangamana na mshukiwa mwenza wa Sonko kwenye kesi nyingine ambayo baadaye alipatikana na virusi vya corona lakini mahakama haijawasikiza. Atkahawa the governor including defense team we were interacting with the co-accused freely so i pointed out to the chief magistrate respectfully that we better adjourn this matter for two reasons one that the uh, doctors have said that they should have uh, two weeks rest another one is that there is a possibility that some of us including the governor may probably have contracted coronavirus at Kawa uh, court. Uh, he rejected my application. Naam ni kutokana na tuwa hizo ambazo zimpelekea eh, wakili huyo Khamino kujiondoa kwenye kesi hiyo ambayo ilikuwa inaendelea. Yaani alijitoa tu katika mahakama wakati kesi ilikuwa ikiendelea mapema hii leo taarifa zaidi mtazamaji ni mwendo wa saa moja kwenye taarifa zetu za KTN leo hata hivyo tukiendelea na taarifa zaidi ni kwa msemaji wa serikali Saira Soguna amesema kuwa serikali ipo tayari kufanikisha mitihani ya kitaifa Oguna anasema kwamba watahiniwa kutoka maeneo ambayo waliokumbwa na tatizo la usalama kama vile Kapedo watafanya mtihani wao bila tatizo lolote Watahiniwa wa KCSE ni 1752981 na wale wa mtihani wa KCPE ni watahiniwa milioni 1.191. As the government we are ready to be able to administer exams to our learners and our candidates who are in uh, class 8 and from form and effective measures have been put in place by the government to ensure that uh, this year's examinations are able to go out and to be rolled out in an efficient and a seamless uh, seam seamless manner and therefore it is all systems go we, there will be a concern really regarding areas like merti capedo and even other locations that have been affected by rising lake waters or where facilities have been submerged i'm here to inform you that uh, Examinations will be conducted across the country, including Capedo and Merti that have had issues to with insecurity. Capedo is perhaps one of the safest places now in the country, and this center that I've mentioned are established even in Capedo, including Merti. So there is no student that will be denied the opportunity to do examination because of insecurity. We have got sufficient measures in place to ensure that uh, exams are conducted in a safe and secure environment. Speaker wa bunge la kaunti ya Kiambu Steven Dishu amewaagiza wawakilishi wote wa kaunti hiyo kuhakikisha wamepimwa virusi vya corona akisema hakuna yeyote atakayekubaliwa kuingia ndani ya bunge hilo bila kuonyesha cheti cha matokeo yake. Haya yanajiri baada ya mwakilishi wa wadi ya Muguga Eliud Ngugi kufariki usiku wa kumkia leo kutokana na makali ya virusi vya corona. Host um a great soldier but we pray to god that uh, he will give the family peace that surpasses all human understanding and that he will rest his soul in eternal peace i will be making further uh, statements on the progress 
Uh, today was just to make this official announcement. We would want to stick to the uh, COVID protocols and the conditions that have been set up uh, by the Ministry of Health. All the members who attended a meeting with Honorable Thithia last week in Mombasa are going to be tested, and actually that has, uh, has been kicked off. And uh, it is good that uh, all of us know their status before we go to meet with other people. And I'm urging everyone, don't let anyone come to your meeting unless his status are known to all of you. Neither should I be allowed to come to your meeting unless you know my status. Because this is becoming too much now. The president is very keen about the containment measures and we are going to support him. Wakati wa huo mtazamaji sekta wa habari hapa nchini inaomboleza kifo cha mwanahabari Tajika na mhariri mkuu wa shirika la Royal Media Services Robin Njogu aliyefariki hapo jana. Njogu alikuwa anapokea matibabu katika hospitali ya Gakana alifariki kutokana na makali ya corona. Njogu amefariki, amefariki siku chache baada ya kifo cha mamake ambaye bado pia hajazikwa. Wengi wamemtaja marehemu kama kielelezo na mfano mwema aliyejitolea kukuza wanahabari haswa katika sekta ya radio. Kabla ya kujiunga na Royal Media, Njogu alikuwa anafanya kazi katika kituo cha Capital FM kwa miaka mingi. Mola aifariji familia yake. Kwa kineko msemaji wa serikali Saira Soguna amesema kuwa magari ya uchukuzi wa umma yataendelea kubeba idadi ya waliowekwa na idadi iliyowekwa na serikali kama hatua ya kuzuia msambao wa virusi ya makusambaa kwa virusi vya corona. Oguna anasema wahudumu wa matatu hawajakuwa wakizingatia sheria zilizowekwa na serikali. Alikuwa akitetea hatua ya treni kubeba idadi kamili ya abiria ilhali matatu hazijaruhusiwa. SGR and trains they may not have you know they may not require covid free certificate because to kondani kondani but they have hand washing stations and they have some so, uh, thermal gun i would wish to be educated on this whether there are any matatu with thermal guns and whether they are really working you know we have a nyayo bus terminal here just next here and even if you have to go out there today for buses that are going to one, you know, uh, Kangwari and wherever, tell me one that has got a thermogun. In the early days they had, perhaps not thermogun, but they had sanitizers and they also had hand washing stations, you know, uh, these two uh, jerry cans, you know, first and somewhere at the back. And we all saw that. That is not happening anymore today. And if there is sanitizer in a Matatu road, you have to be very careful that it's not water and oil mixed together. Right? So those are the various you know, uh, differences that are there. The moment Matatus will begin to provide you and I and all of us you know, um, certain degree of protocol that when you get onto a Matatu, you're washing your hands or you're sanitized and you have your temperature taken and then you move in, then that is a time now we're talking about double standard but as it were now matatus have not been able to strictly adhere to the containment measures wengine kwa wito umetolewa na walimu kuwa miongoni mwa wafanyikazi wa kwanza kupokea chanjo dhidi ya virusi vya corona kama wahudumu wa afya kutokana na hali ya kazi yao ya kutangamana na wanafunzi wengi kila siku Mwakilishi wa kike kaunti ya Migori Pamela Odhiambo pamoja na afisa wa chama cha walimu nchini Nata Caleb Opondi wamesema walimu wako kwenye mha, wako kwenye hatari ya kuambukizwa virusi vya corona kutokana na hali ya kazi Teachers handle a bigger family than all of us and these families uh, these children are coming from different fa families uh, and even when they go back to home you really don't know who they are interacting with so I, I think it is a good idea that the teachers should be not only given the vaccine but also protected even the issue of this uh, uh, masks and uh, the other protective gear that is available, I think I'm on record. I still want to plead with the PS as they consider giving those desks. In some schools, they may not need desks per se, they may need the water 
the flowing water that can actually wash our hands and, and other uh, things like the sanitizers, the masks and all that. So I, I would wish that uh, um, the teachers be supported in every way possible to make sure that they deliver their services effectively as they also protect themselves and their families. We would wish that the vaccination of teachers for the COVID-19 be hastened before the schools close because teachers handle children, teachers interact with the parents who come from different places. And I want to say that the Teacher Service Commission launched the job of COVID-19 to all teachers. In Migori County, we are ready as a union, we are ready to receive the job. Maandamano ya amani yamefanyika mapema hii leo katika eneo la Voi County ya Taita Taveta ili kutoa hamasisho kuhusu masuala yanayowahusu wa hudumu pamoja na maafisa wa kliniki. Haya yanajiri kutokana na mvutano baina ya serikali ya kaunti ya Taita Taveta na wahudumu ambao ulipelekea kupigwa kalamu kwa wahudumu wa afya 400. Maandamano hayo ya amani yaliongozwa na vuguvugu la haki Afrika. Na kama unavyoona hao ni waandamanaji kutoka hapa Voi ambapo maandamano haya yanaongozwa na shirika la haki Afrika uh, kile ambacho wanalalamikia ni kwamba ni utepetevu wa hali ya afya katika kaunti hii ya Taita Taveta tukijua kwamba hadi kufikia sasa bado uh, wahudumu wa afya wengine hawajarejea kazini licha ya uh, mahakama kutoa agizo hilo uh, Gavana wa kaunti Grandton Samoja alishikilia kwamba lazima yeyote akaye rudi kazini aweze kuandika upya maombi ambapo ni jambo ambalo limeza alikupokelewa vema na wale ambao ni wasimamizi ama wate, wa, wa, wanachama wa chama cha kuletea wa hudumu wa afya katika kaunti ya Taita Taveta na ndio maana pia hadi kufikia naona huduma za afya zimerejea lakini katika hali ya polepole pole. na hivi sasa nataka kukupeleka uh, moja kwa moja kwa mazungumzo ambayo tumezungumza na baadhi ya wale ambao ni vinara wa chama hiki kama shirika hili la kuletea haki za binadamu waweze kutuletea kwa kina we are really concerned on the state of the preparedness ya hospitali hii na ndio leo tumeita kwa sababu serikali tunajua ina understand zaidi kama kuna lugha serikali inaelewa ni lugha ya maandamano that is why we have called upon citizens to come together because hii mata ya hospitali yetu kuwa katika hali ilivyo ni uzembevu katika hospitali yenyewe tayari tumeambiwa kuna watu walifutwa kazi madaktari kuna clinical officers kuna nurses walifutwa na hatujui hatuma yao paka sasa ni gani na tunajua ya kwamba wao ndio walikuwa wanahudumikia wa Kenya katika hospitali hii na kuna baadhi ya maswala mingi sana zile remittance ambazo zinatumwa baada wao kukatwa wanakatwa NHIF wanakatwa NSSF na kuna tatanishi tatanishi zaidi kwamba pesa zile wanazokatwa asifikishwi katika ofisi usika kwa hivyo we are calling upon the government to work on the issues especially this county government ya Taita Taveta that there are so many issues in uh, in Moi referral hospital especially on the state of health ya ya wananchi so we want uh, measures taken we want this hospital to be working in full gear napata kwamba county zote watu madaktari wote na manasezo wote walirudi kazini isipokuwa Taita Taveta Naona, sio tu kwa zile kaunti zingine watu hawana hawana mambo ambayo yanawasumbua. Wako nayo. Lakini Taita Taveta peke yake ndipo waliambua eti ni lazima muende muapili ndipo mrudi kazini. So kwa sisi hatuelewi. Hii mambo ya kuapili unajua walikuwa na ambao wa apili. Wengine sasa ina, wengine sasa inabidi wakiapili wana, wanarudi kazi ni kama like eh, wanaanza kazi ya fresh. Like these are experienced people sasa namba zote unarudi unaanza tena kuanzia chini. So all these na, na unapata kwamba some of them wajapata mishahara kama miezi miwili kwenda zaidi. Wakiapili hiyo mishahara yao inaenda wapi? Unapata mambo kama haya ndio sisi kama kama watetezi wa haki tunasema ya kwamba county government lazima iangalie maslahi ya wananchi. Inasemaje tunapigania mambo ya ya wauguzi lakini pia wananchi wenyewe wanahitaji wauguzi. Sasa hizi wameleta wameleta watu hapa ambao ni wametoka college juzi hawana experience wale wote ambao walikuwa na experience hawako kazini so unapata kwamba hata vile kazi inafanyika inafanyika kwa njia tofauti tofauti tumepata reports wengine wanakuwa wanapatiwa madawa sijui eh, doses naekwa juu zaidi unapata they, they don't have that experience mgomo ya manases ilikuwa Kenya mzima haikuwa ni taita taveta peke yake 
kesi ilipelekwa kotini na judge akarul warudi kasi gavana yetu akasema ye aezi rudisha manases kazi amewavuta na wakitaka waandike appeal and in that appeal una denounce your new union ya nurses ya kwamba ulikuwa misled na union kuenda kwa strike then kwa wenye wako hapa wanajua maana ya appeal once umeshaandika appeal inamaanisha umekubaliana ya kwamba ulikosa and it is like you unaulizia ile kazi upya ukisha surrender your appeal it is upon your employer kuamua kama atakurudisha kazi ama atakurudisha kuna 100 million ilisemekana italetwa moy hostel hiyo 100 million mpaka leo hatujajua imefanya kazi wapi na ziko wapi na 50 million walisema wesu 50 million walisema matati hostel 50 million walisema taveta hostel hizo 200 million hatujui 250 million hatujui ziko wapi na zimefanya kazi gani kwa hivyo management committee ya hospitali wahakikishe waitupatie report within the next 14 days Sivyo tutafanya maandamano ya kwenda mpaka kwa head of state. Naam kama ulivyosikia hizo ni lalama za baadhi tu ya wananchi na vile vile e, wanaharakati kutoka shirika la haki Afrika wakilalamikia huduma za afya katika kaunti hii ya Taita Taveta wakiwa wanaigomba serikali hasa gavana Granton Samboja aweze kuwakubali wa hudumu hawa afya waweze kurudi kazini bila masharti yoyote. Ah kwangu kutoka sasa hapa Voi mimi ni Hezron Kimari kwa kwa studio. Asante sana Hezron kwa taarifa hiyo ambayo ulishtumia mapema hii leo. Wahudumu wa boda boda katika kaunti ya Migori wameanza kushuhudia athari za ongezeko la bei ya mafuta. Wahudumu hao wamelazimika kuongezea wateja wao nauli. Kulingana na wahudumu hao wamelazimika kuongeza nauli ili kukidhi nyongeza ya bei ya mafuta hali na wapelekea wateja kulalamikia nyongeza hiyo wakidai wanapunjwa. Baadhi ya wafanyabiashara mjini Migori pia wameitaka serikali kufanyia marekebisho bei ya mafuta kwani wa Kenya wanaendelea kuathiriwa na makali ya virusi vya COVID-19. Tunalia sana kus mafuta ilipandishwa kutoka 118 mpaka kuna filling station zingine wanauza 125, zingine 128, mgeni zingine 130. Asa tunaumia sana kama watu pikipiki. Ni mtu mjaribu kuonga na kuangalisha customer awaelewi. Wanasema wao wenyewe wako pandisha bei. Sasa hapa tunaumia sana. Hatujawahi sikia eti mahali penye mafuta inaweza pandishwa kutoka 118 mpaka 130 venye inauzwa saa hii. Hapo sasa tunalea tuna, tuna sana tunaomba tu uure saidie wananchi mozo watu wa boda boda. When prices are down we do make good profits. But now that prices have gone up and the customers are not willing to change, we are facing a lot of challenges. And uh, I will urge my premier Mr President to review the prices of fuel prices downwards so that anybody can cope with the current situation tunawaomba haswa ningependa kuomba rais wetu mtujali hapa chini tujali sisi mashinani kwa sababu tuna e, tumetoka katika pandemic ya ya coronavirus bado tuko ndio maana hata ukiona hapa nimevaa mask inajaribu sana ili nizingatie hizi measures zote ambazo mliweza kuweka so mimi naomba kwamba kwa ule upande wa mafuta tafadhali e, rais alipota ambako unanisikiza tafadhali utujulie hali nasi kwa sababu hatuko sawa jinsi wengine wanavyosikia na serikali haina budi la kuongeza bei ya mafuta kutokana na ongezeko la bei ya kimataifa mtazamaji haya ni kwa mujibu wa msemaji wa serikali Saira Suguna ambaye anaendelea kusema kwamba wa Kenya wana jukumu la kulipa ushuru na wala hakuna mzigo wa kwa kuongeza bei ya mafuta imeongezeka kwa sababu mahitaji yamekuwa mengi hapo awali mwaka jana kuanzia mwezi wa pili hadi mwezi wa tano kwa hadi na mwaka hadi ya mwisho mwaka jana ni kwamba mahitaji yalikuwa kidogo yamefifia kwa sababu ya janga la corona lakini kwa sasa hivi mahitaji yameanza kuongezeka na kwa hivyo sasa ukiangalia mahitaji pamoja na, tuna, na uwepo wa mafuta ni kwamba wale ambao wanahitaji mafuta kwa sasa wamekuwa ni wengi na mafuta inapozalishwa kidogo ni inakuwa ni haba. Kwa hivyo ukiangalia katika ile tunasema concept ama ina you know, theory ya supply na demand unakuta nyakati ambazo demand inakuwa juu basi na bei pia inaongezeka. Sio lengo la serikali kwamba mwananchi wa kawaida aumie, lakini lazima tukubali kwamba tuko katika ulimwengu 
ambapo kuna nchi nyingine na kitu ambacho kinaguza nchi zote lazima pia na itatugusa nyakati ambazo mahitaji yamepungua bila shaka yote na bei pia tazifanya nini itashuka nyakati ambazo mahitaji yamekuwa mengi kama sasa hivi maana watu wanasafiri sana ndege zimeanza kutembea barabara hizo zime, watu wanatembea barabarani nchi nyingi ambazo labda zamani walikuwa wameweka kafiu wamepunguza kafiu kwa hivyo mahitaji yameongezeka viwanda vimeanza kufanya kazi kwa hivyo mahitaji mafuta kwa sasa imekuwa juu kuliko hapo awali kwa, kwa sababu katika hali kama hiyo basi ni lazima pia na bei itafanya nini itapanda Kenya haina budi kwa sasa hivi ila kuweza kuangalia jinsi gani ya kuweza kukabiliana na kitu kama hicho kwa hivyo njia moja wapo tu ni kwamba aidha iweke ruzuku ruzuku ambao ni ni subsidy ile kuweza kuzuia uh, uh, mzigo huo kwa mwananchi lakini kitu kama hicho kinachofanyika ni kwamba kuna sehemu nyingine itapokonywa ni hiyo sehemu nyingine huende ikawa ni hospitali matibabu kwa jumla ikawa labda ni ene shule ikawa labda ni huduma ya maji mambo mengi kwa hivyo ni kitu ambacho kipo ingekuwa na uwezo tofauti uwezo huo ungetumika lakini kwa sasa hivi kwa bahati mbaya ndio hali tuko ala sio hali ya Kenya peke yake ni kitu ambacho kiko dunia nzima sana so, mambo yoelewe hivyo Tazamaji tukiwa bado tukiwa masuala ya kawi ni kwamba waziri wa kawi Charles Ketera alikosa kutimwa liko wa kuhudhuria mkutano wa kamati ya bunge kuhusu kawi ili kuelezea masuala na uhusiana na umeme waziri huyo alifaa kutoa mwanga kuhusu swala la kuwekwa kwa transformer pamoja na bei ya juu ya umeme nchini the, the early oil exploration about the blocks that we have about agreements that have been entered what are they doing to market the oil production in the country so that we stop this madness of buying fuel kila wakati yet we have so much crude oil with us so uh, again these are some of the issues now we have decided to do as a committee next week the 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 cs uh, petroleum and mining will be before us and i hope this time uh, because is another is another um, cabinet secretary who doesn't attend meetings uh, for, for for this purpose I, we 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 have tried to pass this message to the re relevant and you, the only much we can do is cut their budget and they have very little so again sometimes you look at the seriousness of uh, cabinet secretaries trying to take up the responsibility of their ministry uh, like uh, the cabinet secretary of petroleum is uh, from Turkana where we have and uh, he's doing nothing to be able to see Kenya realizes that very yeah. potential but anyway uh, uh, yes Lim? yeah yeah okay yeah uh, sorry i came late i had another, another engagement uh, Joseph Limo, and Pete Kelly of East. Chair, uh, I think just to comment on the issue of uh, petroleum, uh, what uh, Moshimwa uh, Kiba said here, I think the basic thing here is uh, it's not even about whether we have crude oil or not. I know. However, however I, know I just Moshima, want to comment that. Moshima, you know, yeah. on matters of relevance, I allow, but I will allow you to because it's just a allow, very critical issue. Just allow, because okay. it's a public interest issue. Okay. I just wanted to bring to, 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 the, to comment on what she has just said that we invite maybe the ministry. I want to, to, to add that the biggest issue here is actually uh, the, the, the tax uh, structure on petroleum because if you look at the landed cost landed cost unaendelea kutazama taarifa Zambiu ya KTN tazamaji hicho ni kikao ambacho kilikuwa kinaendelea hii leo ambacho kililaumu kutokuepo kwa waziri wa kawi tunakwenda kwenye pumziko fupi nitarudi tuendelee na taarifa zaidi endelea kuwa nasi